terrific Division II game. It's three to two. Three zero pitch is ball four. A four pitch walk, and Jalissa Rodriguez leads off here in the seventh inning, and she's aboard. And that'll bring up Kimberly Rodriguez from Franklin High School. That's a tough start. I have a saying that nothing good ever happens after a leadoff walk. So we'll see what happens here, but it's always tough when you start with a leadoff walk. These catchers are very, very animated behind home plate. And Ashley Acosta, the catcher of the city, she likes to spray it around the infield. And I love it. I was a catcher when I played back way back in the days. And uh, I love seeing the the uh, spark that she has behind the plate. That's what you look for in a catcher. You're, you're the leader back there. So I love her outgoing personality back there, the way she's hopping out from behind the plate, talking to her teammates, doing a great job. Of course, that's a big run at first base. It's an insurance run for the Valley. They're up 3-2 here. Jalissa Rodriguez at first. Kimberly Rodriguez up. Two balls, one strike. Looking to lay down a bunt. Now she slaps it in the air, and Acosta makes the play. I think it's called it out. She's ruled out as she transferred to throw the ball. She dropped it, and it is an out, although it was a little bit shaky there for Acosta, who just loves to throw, and she was thinking throw before catch. Yeah, she got, got a little excited there, but it definitely was on the transfer. She was reaching in her glove to get it out there. She kind of had a little hop after she caught it, reached in to grab it, and it came out then, so it, it was clearly an out. From Arlita, Yasidra Crenshaw can have some bragging rights today. She's going to be the first batter to get up there three times. Of course, the Valley doesn't have quite as many hitters as the city section. But everybody gets an opportunity to bat, and I love that rotation. Looks like we're going to have some defensive changes here. This is uh, the university catcher, Jessica Sanchez from University High School, coming in to catch now. Uh, Coach Harris probably just trying to give everybody equal time to play here, which is what you try to do when you're coaching in an all-star game. You want to make sure everybody has equal opportunity to play. Well, there's one out. And Crenshaw looks at a strike. She was also looking to go to left field with that slap. She is the prototypical softball leadoff hitter. Speed, can hit the other way, can slap the ball. Roll the first. Second one, first, not in time. Two down in the seventh. Very nice, decisive play by the first baseman. You got to make that decision right away. She didn't hesitate. She went right away to second. If she hesitates, she's not going to get her. So very good, decisive play by the first baseman. Madison Wall, who's currently playing first base for the Valley. Out of Northridge Academy. Madison is 0 for 2 today. And she looks at a strike. Well, you know what you have. You have the starting pitcher out there in the circle in Chiquetta. She uh, gave a free pass to Julissa Rodriguez, but has gotten two outs and is now trying to get out of the seventh and hoping her team will rally. But there's a base hit that's going to roll to the fence. What a shot by Wall. This is going to give the Valley that insurance run, and they lead 4-2 to two as Rodriguez scores. A double and an RBI for Madison Wall and a huge hit for the Valley. Yeah, that was tough, and it, it goes back to, to what I said when we started the inning. You know, it's, it's, it's tough when you start with a leadoff walk. You kind of put yourself behind, and it came back to bite him there. Monhaj bid for extra bases is foul down the right field line. Gabby's 0 for 2. But the Valley has to feel good here. They've been able to add on after the city closed within 3 2. It's a 4 2 game. So the city cuts it to one, and then the Valley responds, and that one gets a piece of Gabby Manha, and she's at first base. That'll bring up the cleanup hitter. Allison Henriksen, who is the starting pitcher today for the Valley. Allison is 0 for 2, struck out and flew out. 
And these hitters now, Cam, are coming up there swinging. They're not looking at pitches. I liked what Sanchez did there with her pitcher. Um, she just tried to, she put her hands out saying, you know, just settle down, settle down. We got this. And, and she could even maybe go a step further. Go out there, just tell her pitcher, take a deep breath, relax, trust your pitchers, and come back strong right here. Two outs, one in. And another hit batter. Back-to-back -back hit batsman. Monha and Henriksen hit. And now the Valley has uh, base runners everywhere. Full bases, uh, first, second, and third. So it's crowded. Cassandra Espinosa of Silmar will come up with an opportunity to give the Valley a handsome lead. Again, Sanchez did exactly what I was hoping she would do. She's going out, trying to calm her pitcher down. Coach's going to take a walk out there. Just say, settled here, you know, and just have the defense let their pitcher know, hey, we got your back. You know, throw, again, trust your pitches. Throw them where we ask you to throw them, and, uh, and we'll get into the bottom of the seventh, and hopefully they'll get a couple runs for it. That's Irvin Davis who went out there working with Lisa Harris. Lisa's from View Park. Irvin Davis is uh, from Dorsey, and he's a former head football coach there at one point. Took over for Paul Knox. Coach there, and now Charles Mintz, he's the head football coach, but uh, Irvin, who handles softball at Dorsey, was the head man of the very good program at Dorsey for football. So the bases are loaded. Cassandra Espinosa is up. And Espinoza is two for two, a single and a double. Two and oh. Hard to find an MVP for Valley. A lot of different players have contributed here, but certainly Cassandra has a chance. Hits that one into right field, and that's going to drop. Two more are in. And it's six to two for the Valley. Cassandra Espinoza is three for three. Well, there's a candidate right there for possible MVP from the uh, from the Valley. Uh, I was thinking Monha too, and possibly uh, Rivera, who did a nice job from Monroe out there. So, but a lot of kids from the uh, Valley are stepping up here, getting the timely hits. So uh, we got a. City's got to bear down right here, get out of this, and see if they can come back and score some more runs. Salgado's one for two. Rihanna Salgado out of San Fernando. We know these Tiger batters can really hit. San Fernando, one of the elite teams in D1 this year in the city. That one stayed up the rise ball. 2 and 0. So Clarissa Chiquetta with some control problems here in the seventh after she re entered as the pitcher. Again, she threw the first two innings as well. Deep to left. This ball's driven way back off the wall. What a ride by Salgado. Two more score. Eight to two for the Valley. Things have gotten away a little bit here from Chiquetta. Um, wouldn't be surprised to see Coach come out of the dugout here, try and get that last out. Uh, we'll see what happens here, but uh, it's kind of gotten away from her. She needs to just set a little bit, take a deep breath, and uh, just fight back hard. So Rihanna Salgado gave that quite a ride. It was halfway up the wall. For a long double, two RBI. She has two hits. Rosa Ortega is up. But what an inning. Five runs have scored here in the top of the seventh. It was a 3-2 game. An uneasy feeling suddenly in that Valley dugout, but not anymore. Not with five in and eight on the board. You know, I go back to what I said at the beginning of the inning about those leadoff walks will always, nothing good ever happens after a leadoff walk, and I think this was the uh, perfect example of that. Ortega strikes out. The inning is finally over, but not before five. Score. Two very big hit batters. They got aboard. They all scored. Five in, a double, and two RBIs for Salgado. Espinosa with a single and two RBIs. After six and a half, the last chance for the city. It's the Valley 8, the city 2. Okay, who 
who's pitching. Uh, it looks like your first pitcher, isn't it? It almost looks like Hendrickson. It is Hendrickson, I think. Allison Hendrickson, who started the game out of Sherman Oaks CES, who's seven and one on the year with that outstanding 1.3 ERA, and he's just three outs to finish off the game for the Valley. They lead 8-2, last chance for the City with Herrera making the final out of the last frame after the City scored two. They'll bat Mendez, Navarro, and Peshtalt. There's the speed, the power, the precision of a Henriksen. Allie Henriksen, boy, she can throw the softball. Another strike, blowing the ball right by Heidi Mendez, who struck out swinging against her back in the second. Again, we want to thank all our friends at Styling Construction out in Chatsworth. All your needs in the Valley. Get your house reworked. The fact they, they've worked from Santa Barbara to San Diego with construction. They do a fabulous job. Styling Construction in Chatsworth, 818-407-1327. 818-407-1327. We're going to have another ball game for you, the Division I All-Star game. And there the city might be the favorite because they have some great pitchers. Cindy Robles of San Pedro, Annalise De La Roca from Port of L.A. So they might be the favorite. Right back to the pitcher, Henriksen, and she underhands to first base. And quickly there's one away. Brings up Jaylene Navarro of Palisades. Mentioned it earlier, she's going to play for the Oilers of West Los Angeles. Looks like the Valley's going to get a win here with an 8-2 lead. And especially with Henriksen in the circle. Let her high for a strike. I'm really impressed with Allison Henriksen in the circle. And I am too, and I was thinking that I'm, I'm looking at the stats I had for her. Her performance here is really backing up that 1.33 ERA and the 73 Ks. I can see uh, that this kid has got a bright future. There she throws that mask off again like a catcher there. Boy, she takes control in the middle of that diamond too to make the play right in that circle, and there's one left for the Valley to get that victory. Navarro is retired. Peshalt will bat. And uh, they're down to their final chance, the city. But we're talking about Allie Hendrickson, who's been great in the circle today. But here's Peshtalt, who's trying to keep it alive. I was going to nickname her the silencer because of her laryngitis. But she's normally outgoing. She looks at a ball. Last chance for the city. Down 8-2 to two and facing what appears to be an ace out there. And Allie Hendrickson. Lifted in the air. Mona at second calls for it, makes the play, and this ball game's over. So congratulations to the Valley. They win the Division II All-Star game here. The 10th edition, 8-2. Cam, your final thought. Well, it was a very close game coming into the seventh inning, So, and I kind of thought how I, it would go as far as not knowing the pitchers, the hitters, trying to get their timing down. Some of them may have been off for a couple of weeks and then things picked up, but there in the top of the seventh, the, the Valley really hit their stride and scored those uh, five runs. So uh, was closer than the final score is showing. Eight to two for the Valley. Tremendous performance. Got three hits from Cassandra Espinosa, two from Salgado. They each had a couple RBIs. Eliana Martinez had a couple of hits as well. That's going to wrap it up for Cam Warner. I'm Randy Rosenblum for entire JD Media crew. And we thank Styland Construction for the sponsorship of our D2 softball game. The final is the Valley 8, the City 2. So long for now.
that went pretty good. I thought that was great. Okay, you could take these. Thank you. You can get these out of harm's way. Thank you, Kim. Right. Thank you, Randy. You did a I appreciate very nice it. Job. I'm a little nervous on the first time, but you know. True, true, true. Sometimes I don't know if I should 